On February 24, 1895, in the Cuban village of Blair, the Grito de Belair Declaration was made, beginning the Cuban War of Independence. What caused Cuba to make this declaration was in large part because of the Wilson-Gorman Tariff of 1894. This tariff placed a 40% tax on the importation of sugar into the United States, causing a massive decrease in U.S. demand. This drastically affected Cuba's economy as their chief export was sugar and they heavily relied on the U.S. markets to import it. These economic troubles severely affected impoverished Cubans but not the ruling Spanish elite, showing that the reforms implemented after the Ten Years' War didn't fix the underlying economic problems of the country. Throughout Cuba, insurgents led by General Maximo Gomez began fighting against Spanish rule. Gomez believed that Spain would concede independence because the cost of maintaining control would eventually exceed the yield of imperialist exploitation. To stop this revolution, Spain would send 150,000 men to Cuba in 1895, but the insurgents were able to avoid capture and continually harass Spanish forces. In 1896, after a year of failing to put down the Cuban rebellion, Spain created a reconcentration policy led by General Valerian Weiler E. Nicolau. The reconcentration policy gave Cubans eight days to move into designated camps located in fortified towns controlled by Spain. General Weiler's goal was to hinder insurgent support and limit their mobility throughout the country. The reconcentration policy failed to prevent the movement and fine of the insurgent forces and killed an estimated 200 to 400,000 Cubans due to overcrowding and unsanitary conditions. This brutal violation of human rights caught the attention of the United States public and would create animosity towards Spain. To gain the public support of the U.S., Cuban refugees would spread exaggerated stories about atrocities committed by the Spanish. These stories would be posted in yellow journals by the likes of William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer, and would be considered some of the first pieces of fake news. While the situation in Cuba turned more and more grim, American leadership was still very hesitant to declare war on Spain. Both President Grover Cleveland and President William McKinley believed that the country shouldn't be plunged into war because of them. The public demanded that the U.S. intervene with Spain and Cuba. Grover Cleveland was able to resist the rising demands of the public, but his successor William McKinley won't be as lucky. When McKinley went into office in 1897, his goals for domestic economic recovery were quickly overshadowed by the Cuban crisis. Pushed by the intensifying public demand for intervention, President McKinley would send a newly appointed Foreign Minister of Spain, General Stuart Lydon Woodford, to make a deal with the Spanish government. While negotiations in Madrid were encouraged, they dragged on for months with no practical results. It became obvious that Spain was disheartened by the futile struggle in Cuba, and they lacked the power or will to end it. Eventually, Spain would recall General Weiler and offer Cuba a degree of autonomy, in which the Crown would appoint a Governor General to control international affairs, but leave the local Cubans in charge of domestic affairs. The Cuban insurgents didn't support this decision, and General Gomez and his men would continue to fight for independence, making a peaceful solution for the situation seem less and less likely. Things would worsen on February 9, 1898, when the New York Journal published a letter from Spanish minister Enrique de Pue de Lom. Lom's letter criticized President McKinley, stating that he was a, quote, weak, bitter for the admiration of the crowd, and a would-be politician who tries to leave the door open behind himself while keeping on good terms with the jingos of his party." End quote. Political outrage would ensue after the release of this letter. It seemed that war between the United States and Spain was inevitable. Throughout February of 1898, riots burned through Loyalist Havana. U.S. Consul General Fitzhugh Lee requested that America send a warship to protect American citizens in Havana. McKinley considered Lee's request and decided to send the USS Maine, a second-class battleship. The statement was made to the Spanish Prime Minister saying that it was, quote, an act of friendly courtesy, end quote. 
Spain believed that the visit of the USS Maine was proof of their cordial friendship with the United States. This gave hope to President McKinley that there was still a chance of avoiding war. That hope would be crushed on the evening of February 15, 1898, when at 9.40 p.m. an explosion would rip through the anchored Maine, killing 266 soldiers. To figure out what caused the explosion, the U.S. Navy Court of Inquiry launched a full-scale investigation. The court inquiry was made up of three members and a judge advocate of the U.S. Navy. In March of 1898, the Court of Inquiry told the U.S. public, quote, In the opinion of the court, the Maine was destroyed by the explosion of a submarine mine, which caused the partial explosion of two or more of the forward magazines. End quote. A separate Spanish inquiry into the sinking concluded that the source of the explosion was internal and that the sinking was a horrible mistake. Despite the conflicting findings of the two inquiries, the American people were outraged and in horror of the deaths of 266 American sailors. The American government demanded compensation for the Maine and independence for Cuba. Spain would eventually agree to compensation for the Maine and an armistice, but not independence for Cuba. It became apparent to the American people that the time for diplomacy was over and Spain's actions could no longer be tolerated. On April 25, 1898, the United States formally declared war on Spain. The cry, Remember the Maine, would be heard for the next four months as America waged war against the Spanish. The aftermath of the Spanish-American War showed that the United States had stepped into a world power who needed to protect their overseas possessions, leading to aggressive expansionism.